Hello, my name's Neil. Welcome to Retro for you. So last week we started working on this here. So join me again this week as we carry on our adventure with the 68008 board. Mr. Robo, where are you off to? Don't stop, I'm already late. Late for what? I'm going on an adventure. So on that note, without further ado, Let's crack on! So last week I started work on this Kumana 68008 board. Now, I got to a point where I asked for the help from you guys, the community that watches these videos, etc. And I uploaded my video and I waited. There was no comment. Then eventually, out of nowhere, comments started to appear. And they arrived. The experts. Hello, we use experts. One of the first things that was suggested to me was I'd made a boo-boo. Yes, quite a big boo-boo. I'd replaced this diode here for the wrong diode. Now, I have since found this on the schematic, which I will put up on the screen now. And you can see it is a free V9, which is a 3.9 volt one. So thanks to one of the other comments, I actually found out what diode, and I've actually ordered those diodes now. And the first thing we're gonna do is to replace that diode as I was also told that bad things could happen well maybe not that bad so first things first let's get this snipped out as we all know this is the wrong one next we'll add some flux and we should just hopefully desolder them and fit the new one So now that's got the correct diode, we can now move on to the next thing. Now the next comments I received from the helpful guys was regarding these two chaps here. Now these two guys here are the tantalum caps and they could be causing my short, I think, because check this out here. Okay, so from here to here, like I said, some people say we got short, some people haven't, but if I go from here to here, Continuity here to here. Continuity. Here to here, continuity. And here to here, continuity. Now that shouldn't be right, should it? It shouldn't be like that. So what we're going to do next is we're going to pull these tank caps out, or tantalum caps. And I have a box of them here, which we can replace with the values here. So also... When we pull these out, we're going to test each one with a meter and see if they are actually shorted. Hopefully, that's it. Thanks again, guys, for your comments. Your big help. So, the first one we're going to be removing is this one here. So, let's crack on.
that's that one removed. Now let's just try it with a meter and see what happens. So here's that capacitor. I've got my meter on continuity. Hopefully you can hear that beep. If you can't, it is beeping. So we're just going to put one to one leg, the other to the other. And we've got nothing. That cap does seem to be okay. So what we're going to do next is we're going to pop it in the tester and see how much it reads. So we've got the cap. We're just going to stick it in this multi-function tester, which is a good thing anyway for testing items, etc. And hopefully we'll just press this button. There you go, capacitor, 9,500 NF. So that is a 10 UF. So it does look okay, that capacitor. So that one doesn't seem to be the problem, but we will replace it anyway with one of the new ones. Might as well now we've taken it out. So, so far, that tan does look good. So what we're going to do next is, you've guessed it, we're going to remove the next one. So the next tan is here. In between these two chips. So let's test this capacitor. We're just going to stick it in the multi function tester. And we're going to test away. This one seems to be taking a bit longer to test. That guys, we may have found a bad yeah. 28 PF. That is not in spec at all. Now that is a bad cap. Well done guys. Thanks for the comments. We found a bad cap. Now, what I'm going to do is we're quickly going to check the board, see if the short's still there. So, we're just going to turn this on. Hopefully, you can see this. We've got it on beeper. Both tanks are removed, and we shall see. So, we still have the continuity there. And 35 ohms again. We'll just try it again. Turn it to ohms, it's say 35 anyway. So there you go, the 35 ohms is still there across here as well. Yep, so I don't know whether that's correct or not. If anybody's got a board out there and can do me a quick measurement, it would help a lot. So here's the replacement tanks I've got because we know one is bad, which is good. So we're going to replace these now. I know these are polarized, and I know the long leg is a positive, so I'm going to make sure. They go in the correct way. So let's just crack on with that. Okay, so that's the tanks replaced here and there. This is still reading continuity. The next thing I'm going to do is remove all these chips. Now, somebody did suggest that, but I couldn't quite find the comment and just test again. So we're going to start by removing this bank of memory chips here. So that's all the memory chips removed. 
let's just try again. And it's still there. It's even shorted across here, it's got continuity, so that to me just still doesn't seem right. I don't know, what do you guys think? Drop a comment down below, <laughs> let me know. So next we can remove this CPU and try again. So there's the CPU removed and we'll just go across here again. And it's still there. Now these were warming up, so I guess these are okay. There's a few other ICs we can remove on this corner here. Again, 45.5, so I'm going to stick all these back in. back to the 34.3 now the chips are in now it could be that that's normal like i said i've got nothing to base it on because i've never seen one of these boards before so it could be normal like some people said in the comments at the moment that's as far as i'm going to go tonight and today this week so drop me a comment down below again on where to go next so what we need to do next time is replace this capacitor here that was broken and also again put some power through it and we'll get the oscilloscope out and we'll do some probing to see if the clock's running etc because that's going to help in it a couple of crystals down here which we can scope out to see if there's any clocks on there so that's it for now until we get that capacitor and we get the other million meter we're a bit stuck but if you've got any more suggestions i mean you guys have been a great help we've got this far thanks to you guys then drop me a comment down below again because it helps and i read every single comment i promise and i try to respond to every single comment so that's about it for now i'll see you in the outro so we made it to the end of another video Unfortunately, we can't carry on those repair anymore this week because we're still missing the capacitor. The million meter hasn't turned up to do some more diagnostics. So we've gone as far as we can. And the reason we got this far is thanks to you guys from last week's video. Yes, all those comments you left me down below, it's helped me a lot. And I've tried to follow through them and do what you suggested. And I really do think... You've helped me a lot and we've come a lot further with this board. I mean, these caps, we found a faulty cap. I'm not going to be able to carry on with this next week, unfortunately, because I'm due in Blackpool at the Retro Expo. So I'm going to be there with 8-Bit Retro Refix. I'll be wearing this t-shirt. I will wash it before then, don't worry, guys. And if you're there, then come along and say hello. So on that note, please check out my fellow YouTubers down below. There's the likes of Captain Commodore, 8-Bit Retro Refix, Joseph Retro Bits, to name but a few. And they always do great things like repairs, programming, etc. So check them out. Also, why I've got everybody here, hopefully you're still here anyway, please check out our live stream. Now, it's on this next Sunday coming now, and it's on 8-Bit Retro Refix's channel. I'll leave a link down below. So comment down below, even if it's hello, and please hit that like and subscribe button. So that's it for now. I shall see you next time on Retro For You. See you soon, guys. Bye.